the OAuth 2 authorization code grant type with the Layer 7 OAuth toolkit. In this video, we're illustrating the Layer 7 gateway implementing the roles of the OAuth authorization server and OAuth resource server on behalf of your API. This relies on the OAuth 2 template implementation to which you attach your existing API, your existing source of API keys, and your existing identity providers. The OAuth 2 template implementation covers the entire OAuth 2 specification in all its richness. This video focuses on the authorization code grant type, and you will find other videos in the same series that cover other aspects of the specification. Follow the instructions in the Getting Started Guide to set up a template in your own environment. The OAuth 2 implementation template contains a policy for the authorization server. In there, you'll find a branch for handling each grant type. You'll also find a policy fragment which performs the runtime access control based on OAuth access token, which you can attach to your own policies. A sample resource server provides an example for this pattern. Finally, there's a client application for each grant type that you can use for testing purposes. The flow for the authorization code grant type goes like this. First, the resource owner is redirected by the client application to the OAuth authorization server in order to express authorization. At that point, the authorization server issues an authorization code and sends it back to the client application through the user agent redirection. The client application can then use this authorization code to ask the authorization server for an access token. Once the access token is in possession of the client application, it can then use it to consume the application on behalf of the resource owner. Here, I'm using the authorization code test application in my browser. Uh, to initiate a new OAuth handshake, I simply click this button here, and the client application redirects me to the OAuth authorization server and prompts me for authentication. In my authorization server policy, here's the branch where I welcome the subscriber. You can modify the user experience here by changing the HTML or simply redirecting to another web page. In the second step, I'll authenticate the subscriber and prompt for authorization. Here, you could plug in your own identity provider or AIM solution instead of using the built-in one. So I click Login, I'm challenged for credentials, and then I'm taken to the next step. When I accept to grant access to the application, the authorization server then creates the authorization code and builds a redirection response back to the client application, which will include this authorization code with it. Now back at my client application, uh, the client application then uses this authorization code to get a new access token. I can test the use of this access token by the client application by consuming an API here at the bottom of the application. Here's the part of the authorization server policy, which authenticates the client application, <clears throat> verifies the authorization code, and grants the access token. You can incorporate your own method of authenticating the client application at this point. The API call by the client application using the access token is authorized in this policy fragment. The sample resource server simply verifies that the token is valid and returns information associated with the OAuth se session for testing purposes. This session information would be used to tailor your access control rules when you attach this fragment to your own API. Using the test application, you can also test refresh tokens. Here is the authorization server policy branch, which handles the refresh request, validates the refresh token, and issues a new access token based on it. You can incorporate your own specific rules pertaining to the use of refresh tokens here. Finally, you can simulate the revocation of an existing access token and test the runtime behavior when a revoke token is used to access an API. 